next sort of important thing is you know what's protecting your your protection. Uh, here's sort of an example just of a, of a kitchen. There's a few lines of uh, a protection. Your your security is in your redundancy. It's it's in having a few different things happening uh, at once. So the example here, you know, there's laminated glass on the the doors, double sided deadbolts. There's a motion detector and a, a glass break sensor and a, and a door contact. What we typically do when we're setting out uh, security is we want to have three lines of detection. So we've got your, your perimeter connected. So as soon as the door opens, the alarm's going to go. The glass break sensor, which is going to wait for the sound of the breaking glass. It's the only device we could install inside your house that will detect someone while they're outside. And then just sort of as a bonus, afterwards we put in uh, motion detectors. Most, most homes are kind of set up in the off opposite. They've got the motion detectors normally as being the, the primary detection device. And just the reality for some of the reasons we've gone through, if that's the first thing that trips, just the, the burglary is going to be done by the time anybody gets there. One of the big realities of all alarm systems, almost all alarm systems, is they use the telephone lines to, to communicate. So you can spend a million dollars on your uh, alarm system. And if you just come to the TELUS box outside of the house that everyone's got and just cut the line, you've just disabled the entire system from, from outside. So it's a really important consideration. There's things that you can do. You can put in cellular backup. You can put in, a, uh, we have a mesh radio system that we use uh, on the west side. Uh, but you've got to do something to either, either physically protect that or use some sort of backup communication. But uh, it's really important to understand that is sort of the Achilles heel of any, of any alarm system. And, That's sort of a marketing trick because there's lots of, uh, it says so on the box, but what the alarm does is the alarm on the keypad, it'll say line cut or that it's lost, lost uh, connection. But it can't tell anybody that because the line's yeah, gone. No, it, it can't. Uh, you have to have some other means of communication. So the alarm's trying to connect, but it can't, it, it can't talk to anybody. So that's why you have to have the backup, uh, the backup communication. Right, so the monitoring station doesn't even get that. That right. was my question. They won't yeah. get that there's a that, that the monitoring station will get the fact that they've been cut off from your house. Yeah, no, it won't. no, because what happens is you're sharing the phone line. Because the way the technology works is the phone line's connected to your to your house, and the alarm system gets attached to the, your phone line that you're using. Yeah. Now we can install like years ago, like in banks and jewelry stores, you put in a, a special alarm system that would pull that line constantly. So if you cut the phone line. The, the alarm company would know that, that well, all it would know is that the, alarm, the line is maybe not working, maybe it's been cut. They wouldn't know what's, what's going on. But you'd have to have that phone line dedicated. So you have to pay, you know, 40 bucks to tell us for that line just for, uh, and then have the gear going back and forth. And it just wasn't a very effective system anyways. So we can get around it now easily. It's just important that you know that it's, that's, that's a risk on every, every uh, alarm. Now the other, the other thing that, that is a risk is, uh, Sorry. Yeah. How do you get around it? We put in uh, backup systems, uh, like cellular backup. So we install, it's, uh, it's, it's literally like a, it's a cellular phone that gets attached to the alarm system down in the, the basement. So when the alarm goes off, it sends a signal over your phone line, and it also sends it uh, using a cellular signal to us. Uh, we also use a, we have a network called the Blink Network that's set up throughout uh, the west side of Vancouver. And what it, it's a mesh radio, and so what it does when the alarm goes off, it sends us a signal within one second. We get a wireless signal, and so that's it's the most secure and the fastest. But you can't, um, so it doesn't matter. You can cut the lines; we're still going to get the signal. It's just you have to have, you have to have both. One of the other risks is, is a lot of people now are switching from their Telus analog phone line over to to Vonage. Vonage is just like a a regular sort of voice over IP. You know, a, a computer network-based uh, system, and then Shaw Digital Phone and Rogers Home Phone. A service like Vonage, you see advertised on TV, your alarm will not work. Like, there's just no way. Just the alarm system will absolutely not be able to communicate uh, uh, over over Vonage, and uh, and you also can't call 911 on a lot of those uh, a lot of those systems. And there's some major lawsuits going on in the states right now because that wasn't really no one was told that when they called 911 that it wasn't going to get anywhere. Now with Shaw Digital Phone and Rogers Home Phone, 911 will work, and we've had a bit of a, a battle with uh, on on our uh, on my blog. I've sort of had a bit of a battle with Shaw Digital Phone uh, uh, about this because what we found is that the alarm does it can communicate, but it's quite 
it's slow and that there's some big risks with, uh, with the communication. We don't always get the, the signal. So what we're recommending to anybody who has, wants to switch to a uh, uh, digital phone or voice over IP is that they use some sort of backup communication because it's not as reliable for the alarm as just a regular analog TELUS uh, phone line.